Hello my dear friends, you are on the Military Summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 23rd of December. Today we have some interesting updates, so let's start. First we are going to start with the Kupensk Liman front line with this area. As you can see according to the Western sources map there were a lot of clashes all over the front line. The Russian pushes on the north. As we discussed yesterday the Russians are trying to attack in direction of Kupinsk in direction of Liman from the north trying to split this area into parts and so on. Uh, if we are talking about the north part, about the Kupinsk, mainly the Ukrainians were in defense state and the Russians attacked the Ukrainians. And as a result of uh, artillery attacks, the Ukrainians lost around uh, 30 soldiers and something around 6 armored vehicles. Very interesting updates are coming from the south, from the Liman bridgehead. As you can see, even if we take a look at the Russian sources map, we see that there is a small back around Krimina. So from some kind of uh, military perspective, military point of view, it's a very interesting uh, direction to attack and uh, the Ukrainians do have possibilities to attack this back, trying to uh, encircle or reduce the Russians who located in the line between Dibrovo and this forest. And this is exactly what the Ukrainians uh, do uh, during the previous these days and um, furthermore if we take a look at the western sources map we see that the western source map has been updated and starting today uh, the western source map shows that Dibrova this uh, the red Dibrova, Chervona Dibrova is under in the gray zone this territory is not under Ukrainian control not under the Russians but this area is in the gray zone and if we uh, try to analyze the report of Minister of Defense of Russian Federation during the previous weeks. They reported a lot about attacks from Ukrainian commandos using this force in direction of Kriminaya. The Ukrainians uh, sense every single day a lot of commandos, a lot of scouts through this forest. Uh, these forces are completely invisible for the Russians because it's very difficult to spot them in the forest and this is a very nice it's a benefit for the Ukrainians. They understand that they are able to pass this forest and get right inside of Krimina so the clashes is all over the front line, all over the forest. The Russians every single day reports about destroying two, one, three commandos in this area, but as we can see, it is not enough to stop the Ukrainians. Furthermore, if we take a look at the disposition map, we will find one important update is that according to deployment map, the Ukrainians deployed 241st Territory Defense Brigade in this area, right exactly on the south from this forest. So I believe that Ukrainians reinforced this area, moved a lot of new fresh forces, and now they're using these fresh forces and their attack in direction of Crimea. To tell the truth, I can't tell exactly if the Russians are able to hold this territory because the progress shows that sooner or later the Ukrainians will be able to take control over this territory. So let's wait and sooner or later we will see and we will understand if the Russians are able to hold Dibrova and these towns along the forest. We'll see. Now we are moving to the Bilogorovka Solidar front line. Uh, there were no updates. The only things that there are very heavy clashes. The Russians tries to storm and tries to develop their offensive operation in the direction of Solidar, Visole. To tell the, uh, the Ukrainians, uh, they reported in their daily update that uh, these days uh, they managed to repulse the uh, Russian offensive operation in the vicinity of Visole. So that means that as soon as the Russians got control of Yakovlyka, they changed their focus in direction of Visole, trying to increase the bridgehead and so on. Now we are moving to Bakhmut. As you can see, there are a lot of uh, icons over the Bakhmut. We got a lot of interesting updates. The Ukrainians continued doing rotation process in Bakhmut. They moved uh, their they complete the movement of uh, or uh, 93rd mechanized brigade so they moved this brigade out and they brought uh, territory defense brigade uh, number 120 so they are bringing a lot of uh, forces a lot of fresh forces mainly territory defense um, these guys are very nice forces to stay in buildings and they're doing their own main job is to hold the russians if we're talking about the russians Today we receive at least two 
uh, two interesting updates. The first one is in the east part of Bakhmut, as you can see, there is an icon with the Russian flag showing that, uh, according to the Wagner's reports, according to the Wagner's officers on the ground, they reported that they managed to develop their bridgehead in this area and that they entered this, uh, this industrial zone and some residential area in this, uh, in this part of Bakhmut, in the east part of Bakhmut. If we take a look at the Western Sources map, of course, we won't find these updates, but uh, let's update this map according to the Russian sources. Just for better understanding of the situation in Bakhmut. So Ivangrad is under the Russians. Now that like something like this. Then we go to the west part. So according to the Russian sources, they control something like this these days in Bakhmut. So as you can see, the difference is very big. Mm, uh, I'm not saying that this entire area is under 100% is under Russian control, but at least 90% is under the Russians and the rest of the territory is in the gray zone. So as you can see, the Russians entered Bakhmut um, in its residential area. Now this area uh, is the mo is one of the heaviest and one of the hottest placed in in Bakhmut. Uh, it's like a residential area with the small buildings and the Russian storms pushes the Ukrainians and of course, uh, it's very important to take control because as soon as the Russians are able to take control over this territory or to develop their offensive operation till River Bakhmut, then they will be able to cut supply and support of Ukrainian forces in Opetnaya and the Ukrainians will be forced to step back on this side of the rivers and to protect this part of Bakhmut. So the Russians got some uh, some block and they try to develop their offensive operation. Now the important data are coming from the south. I'm talking about this, uh, the area on the west west of Andreevka. If you remember, we discussed that the Russians attacked Lishevka from the north, trying to cut supply from Bakhmut and another attack from the south uh, in direction of the trenches in this area. And today, uh, the Russians reported, as you can see, the gray zone has been updated for now. Now it shows that the Russians are very close to Bakhmut and there may be some these days we might see a clashes in the south of Bakhmut. So just to understand, let's update this map. And uh, according to information from the Russian sources, uh, the Russians control uh, completely established control over this part of um, of the area in the south of uh, Klishevka. And now the Russians attack Klishevka from the south, but for now without any progress. If we're talking about the front frontline, uh, the Russians reported that during the previous 24 hours clashes, the Ukrainians lost around uh, 80 soldiers and something around 13 armored vehicles. And one more time about Liman, uh, during the previous 24 hours, the Ukrainians lost around two commandos and groups and uh, around 40 soldiers, five arm armored vehicles on Liman frontline. Uh, and that's it about Bakhmut. Now we're moving to Donetsk. Uh, if we're talking about Donetsk, there are no changes on the ground. Uh, there are very heavy clashes, but without any progress on the ground, but the Ukrainians do have reserves. They do have soldiers to rotate, to send fresh forces. And of course, um, this situation slows the Russians' progress. And for now, the, only th the, only the thing that the Russians are doing is they're reducing the Ukrainians. But we see that um, there are reports that about like 80, 100 soldiers lost from the Ukrainian side per day. So that means that uh, to reduce this Ukrainian army around Donetsk will take a lot of days, maybe even months. And uh, during this process, the Ukrainians are able to recruit and train new forces. So this process is going to uh, also going to take a lot of a lot of time. If we are talking about uh, South Donetsk front line, the Ukrainian lost around 45 soldiers and something around seven armored vehicles. And um, there, there is no changes as well. The front line are completely stable. The Ukrainians hold their position and they are not giving even chances for the Russians to develop their bridgehead. Um, interesting updates are coming from uh, Nivolska, from let's say not from Nivolska, but from uh, this front line. If we take a look at deployment map, we'll see that Ukrainians deployed in this exactly in this area. Their uh, 59th motorized brigade in the area of Nivolska. So um, we discussed the situation many times that the Russians promised to take control to take of Marinka during the next during this December. And as soon as they're able to do this, of course, Krasnogorovka might appear in some kind of operational encirclement. And the only checkpoint 
that uh, Ukrainians need to hold is Nivolsk if they want to have a stable supply and support of Krasnogorovka. So this is the reason the Ukrainian commands decided to deploy 58th uh, motorized brigade right in front of, uh, right in the back of Nivolsk in this area, with one purpose to slow down the Russians in this area to slow down their progress. So we'll see if it, it if it helps them because. Uh, I'm not sure that it will help them because of the weather, because of air many factors, because of lack of artillery, but um, I believe that Ukrainians do have possibilities to win some time, but not to win the battle for Nivoyska and Krasnogorovka. Anyway, they will be forced to step back if they don't have any other solution or option what to do. If we're talking about the rumors, about talks, uh, the Ukrainians uh, and the Western sources and the Ukrainian sources are saying that uh, during the 24th or 25th of December, they, ex uh, they expect another um, missile attack. Uh, and it's going to be a very huge missile attack right before the new year. And according to the Western sources or Ukraine sources, uh, the Ukrainians expect around 60, 70 missiles to be launched on the territory of Ukraine. It will be, of course, it will be a blackout. Uh, if the Russians are able to achieve success, uh, they will damage al almost already ruined energy facilities of Ukraine. And I believe that Ukrainians won't be able to restore uh, energy system before the new year in New Year Eve. And another important rumors that um, today, by the way, the president of Belarus uh, uh, moved, uh, went uh, with the visit to the Moscow. Uh, there is some kind of meeting with between the presidents of many countries in, of this region. And uh, the Ukrainians expect that the, the, the Russians and the Bill Russians are going to start their offensive operation uh, on the 24th or 25th of December. So the next two days, uh, according to the uh, Ukrainian sources, the, for, the US forces of Belarus and Russia are going to start some, some, some operation on the north of Ukraine during the next two days. So we'll see. I believe that it's not true, it's some kind of speculation, but anyway, it's possible uh, the Russians are able to attack the entire Ukraine with missiles, and uh, on the other hand, uh, the Belarusian forces with the Russians will attack the Ukraine from the north. So it will be like combined operation at the same time, just to reduce the Ukrainian possibilities, to reduce their uh, their connections, to reduce their uh, everything they have. And of course, with this, they will be able to achieve a lot of success. And that's it for today. Military Summer Channel reminds you can demand your balance in Ukraine. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes. Join my Patreon. Have a good day. Bye bye.